Greetings campers, welcome to Farmer Ritaville. Today we're checking out Volcano Bay here at Universal Orlando Resort. This is Universal's only water park. It's the newest Big Bad Water Park here in Orlando. And uh, this actually is not my first time. I've been here before and uh, I did some research because I've never been to either of Disney's water parks, Typhoon Lagoon and Blizzard Beach. And Typhoon Lagoon at the moment is closed. I'm not sure if it's because it hasn't reopened because of COVID or because it's the middle of winter and it's refurb season because I know they tend to go down sometimes uh, this time of year. Uh, and so it came down to Blizzard Beach or Volcano Bay. Well, I'd never been to Blizzard Beach, so I wanted to give it a fair shake. So after uh, some extensive Googling, the online community seems to believe that Volcano Bay is worlds ahead of any of the other water parks here. So rather than go try something new and, uh, you know, with my expectations where they are because of Volcano Bay, I decided to just come back to Volcano Bay. Enough yakking, let's get to it. Everything is wet, even the signs are wet. I, that's actually really cool. Mm, the water smells clean and chemically. I just scanned in with my ticket and they issued me my Tapu Tapu and uh, this is basically a wearable uh, smart bracelet and it, you, I don't know if you can read it there, it, it gives you clues and it tells you stuff and basically once you're in you can link this with the uh, Universal Park app on your phone and you can use this to uh, reserve a spot in lines with all the virtual lines on some of the rides and you can use it to pay for stuff after you link a credit card to it through the app. Uh, that comes in handy and um, you don't have to carry anything around. Uh, you go get a locker, put all your things in your locker, and uh, this is the, the end-all be-all. You are now on the grid, you're part of the system. Dale Gribble would have a shit fit over this thing, but it really is super useful while you're here in the water park. And right here at the park entrance, one of the cool things about it, and these are all over, but they've got these photo stations. So, really well-themed, well-decorated, but you can walk up, scan your Tapu Tapu, and then go over here and stand uh, at the photo op and then later at the end of the day you can get all those photos. I'm just gonna cheat and do it like this. So I just dumped my stuff in my locker using my Tapu Tapu and like I mentioned earlier if you have a universal uh, account like in the app if you are a pass holder or you buy tickets to the parks a lot and you already have a card link to that it's automatic. I didn't have to do anything. I purchased my ticket the other day through the app and then once I scanned into the park, it's like, hey, you're here. It knows which Tapu Tapu was issued to me and my card's already linked. So now I can go around and use this to pay for anything. And I just used it to grab a locker. It's easy as walk up, wave it, locker pops open. I can shove my stuff in there. And uh, they do have large uh, full-size locker rental for the day so that you can stuff all of your things in there. So now let's start out. I'm just gonna walk around and show you guys some things. And then uh, later on, we'll get into the fun stuff, the water rides and whatever. I'm not exactly sure when I'm going to publish this video yet, but it is the middle of December right now while I'm filming it, and this place is dead. There is nobody here. Uh, I feel like I'm going to be able to just run free and do any water slide, anything I want today. Walkways are clear, cabanas are empty, and on the bus over here from the parking garage, the bus I was on wasn't even full, and I was parked in the first row of cars. They hadn't even filled a whole row of parking yet. This is the Volcano Bay December to remember tourism event when nobody is here. Great thing about Florida, year round, awesome weather. You can go to a water park at Christmas time and it's not busy in the least. Feels good to just walk in the sand too. Even though it's a man-made fake beach, I don't care. It's beautiful here. Thank you. 
and the video screen with the wait times. Look at it. All the rides right now. Enjoy anytime, 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 right now. Excellent. Picked a good day to come. bars they have on property and either it's early enough in the day they're not open or this is at the back of the park and it doesn't even look stocked so they just may be closed running one bar because it's off season but it's great when you like grab a drink and just get out of the sun and if you get a view on the right side you can just watch people crash landing at the end of these slides over here while you're enjoying a tropical frozen drink I know what you're telling yourself, Jake, how are you not gonna have a frozen tropical drink? Oh, I'm gonna, I will find out where they're served and I will go get one. Dancing Dragons, the other outside bar, the one near the front of the park, and it would look like this is going to be the only one open today because it's already nearly noon, and uh, this one's set up. I don't think the other one's going to open, but they're both kind of themed. They look like giant ships, and they both have views of uh, people crash landing and water slides, so lots of fun. I just got here. It's too early for me. I know you're shocked, but we will be back and get a cocktail later. First dip of the day in the wave pool. Ooh, the water's warm. Woo -hoo -hoo. Oh, this feels good. It definitely doesn't feel like Christmas time. It also doesn't feel like I'm in the middle of Orlando and I-4 is like right over those trees behind me. But it is. This is heaven. And truth be told, I'm not even that much of a water park guy. Uh, before I came here for the first time two or three years ago, I can't tell you the last time I went to a water park. And I don't swim a lot. I'm more of a uh, relax in the hot tub kind of guy. But this place is pretty awesome. This is helpful when they tell you how many stairs you have to walk up to do one of the rides. I'm not going up that many stairs. Oh, uh, here's a cool like fountain observation deck. Unfortunately, it's closed. I can't get over there. Uh, I guess they're doing, it looks like they're doing redecking on it, but it overlooks the uh, pool, the main wave pool from the front of the volcano right here. But now that I've switched to the waterproof camera, we're gonna go inside the volcano. I hope we can see this camera's waterproof and not good at low light, so we'll just have to see. The 
volcano itself houses multiple water rides. This one right in front of us is Krakatau, the aqua coaster, which is definitely my favorite ride here. Unfortunately, you can't take GoPros on any of the water slides, but you can see from this point, there are uphill and downhill sections in this ride. And there's a lot of really detailed uh, videos out there on how that works. But the long story short is that it's uh, magnets in the slide and in the bottom of the raft. And there's even more slides built into the structure around. And down there at the bottom is one of the lazy rivers I talked about earlier. And something that I like about this water park is the uh, theming. You just got this great immersive environment all the way around, just like a theme park. But everything's wet. You're wet. Everything can get wet. Here's another interactive element. Let's see what it does. <laughs> These things are all, it's a dryer. These things are all, it's like a blast of air. And it actually startled me a little bit. I had no idea what to expect. I don't know if you guys can see any of this. I'm going in the cave now. It's getting darker. That's one of the most fun elements to me here is the, the interactive tiki got inside the volcano and uh, it's actually kind of hard to find there's the path i'm walking out right now it's snaking between cabanas and we'll just kind of emerge onto like one of the main roadways and the way we walked in uh i showed you guys the the sign for the water slide it looks like you're going into that water slide but there's actually another path that diverts off and takes you in the volcano so it's kind of hidden yeah, we've come out over here on the other side of the volcano near the mysterious roll-up access door. All right, here's another station. I think it makes that fountain up there explode for people on the river. Let's see. Yep, I was right. Maybe people on the bridge, too. Man. These little interactive play elements around the park uh, are just another one of the things that I think sets this apart from water parks before it and just makes it such a cool place to come hang out, even if you're not getting wet. But why would you come here and hang out and not get wet? I got my life jacket. We're about to get in the lazy river. This one, you have a life jacket that you wear, not shoes. <laughs> and now the currents pick me up and I'm just floating. You know, I could touch the ground. It's only four feet deep. And we're off. See where this takes us. I think this is the crazy one. I think this is the one that goes through the tunnel. There is a lot of momentum on this. This is awesome. Just float and ride it there's my point of view Whee!
beauty of this being a lazy river is you you don't get kicked off you can just stay here as long as you want if they would let me bring a little floaty margarita i probably wouldn't ride anything else all day but that doesn't appear to be an option it's not a bad way to get like a tour of the park also you just kind of float around and be like, oh, the yellow one. Did we ride the yellow one yet? You should go ride the yellow one. All right, we're halfway around because here's the other place you can get on and off. There's two, two places you can get in and out of this river. waves ahead <laughs> that's fun it's rocky up here there's the there's the waterfall we triggered earlier from the side of it with the tappy tappy trigger i will say i definitely feel safe doing this not just because of the life jacket but uh the number of lifeguards their overlapping fields of view uh down the run are quite a bit i bet there's probably got to be close to 20 lifeguards on this little loop so if something happens someone's going to see it immediately and that seems to be prevalent everywhere I've been in the park, which is really cool. So, feel safe coming here. And here's our exit. Should I walk under the waterfall? Look at that. Yeah, I'm walking under the waterfall for you. And now my sunglasses are safe. I finally got on the other river, the Tube River. This one is shallower and slower and not as crazy. I found another one of the triggered gags you can do from up on the bridge. Okay, here's the fun part. This is this is what I think is so cool. You get to go through a cave with water features and lighting and and fog. I don't know. I just think it's awesome. Maybe I'm being a big kid. was really long and I might have drank yours on the way over here. Yeah, no. <laughs> here, have a sip. There you oh, go. Thank you. <laughs> I told you. Appreciate it. I told you I wouldn't forget you. You did. <laughs> Look, I'm not gonna lie, I didn't believe you. 
<laughs> that has nothing to do with you. It just has to do with everything that's happened in the past. You, you know? You've been hurt before. Yeah, exactly. I'm different. I'm a man of my word. <laughs> All right. <laughs> When you tell a mystical volcano god that you're going to do something, you have to do it because the consequences could be really bad otherwise. I got the signature drink, which I forgot the name of, and we'll have to look up online and dub into this video later when I edit it. All right, well, I found the one caveat of uh, going somewhere like this on a Monday when it's slow, and that is uh, they don't open everything all the time. I mentioned earlier already there's only one bar open well at that one bar there's one bartender and it's all fancy signature cocktail drinks and so i probably had to wait about 20 minutes to get this drink and uh, i would love to keep sucking these down but i don't want to wait in that line again so this might be the only one i have all day otherwise still not crowded still no lines so i mean it's a decent trade-off it is time for lunch and uh, I got a mango curried fried chicken that comes with slaw and fries. There are some decent food options here. Like I said earlier though, today is Monday and uh, it's not peak season. It's not peak anything, it's slow and it is staffed as such. So a lot of the food stands, a lot of the walk-by drink stands uh, are closed. A lot of these water slides that have two sides that mirror each other, only one side is open. So it's definitely minimally staffed. So unfortunately that takes away some of the food offerings. Fried chicken with slaw and fries is the route I'm going. So I went and I did a uh, handful of the water rides. Um, I don't remember the names of all of them. I did uh, two bride by myself where super fast and you're in an enclosed tube all the time and it's got to be the same way that a, a turd feels like after you flush it because it's just whoosh 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 and uh it was pretty crazy i got to do crack a towel the aqua coaster twice twice that is hands down my favorite ride here and uh walk on that's why i did it twice is just get out and go right back around i think i waited maybe five or ten minutes each time there really wasn't much of a line. Uh, the only reason that it took a five or 10 minute wait is because it didn't look like they had that many rafts on the ride. So you just had to wait for them to load and unload people. But the built-in queue area for that ride is, is actually fairly small. So even if it was full, it's not that bad of a wait. So when the park is busier, you can use Tapu Tapu. You would go over to the entrance of that ride and scan it and it would give you a return time, like a window to come back and when you come back during that hour window, you hop in the queue. The first time I rode it, I think that queue was almost full when we got in it, and it still was maybe 20 minutes at the most, so it wasn't that bad. The cool thing about it, not just the lack of the weight, was that it's a four-seater raft ride, and typically, they I've never seen them send single riders on it because of like weight distribution, I think, but they were sending out single riders. Uh, I said one, and they gave me my own boat. And I saw a couple other people, gave them their own boat. And another fascinating thing, how they've really got this park like is ahead of the curve or, or you know, the future of water parks, I guess, when it debuted. Uh, you get up to a ride dock and you walk onto a scale. You may not realize it, but you walk onto a scale and so they can group your party or they can add you to uh, another party like they did me. I'm by myself. So uh, I did another raft ride where it's a big, huge raft that seats five people all the way around the outer edge and your feet are all in the middle. And I got paired with this, uh, this family here on vacation, which I believe was Italian. They definitely did not speak English. And it was just a great moment. They, they got on the ride and I'd never ridden that particular ride and we drop down and this raft goes up like almost 90 degrees vertical and you spin around so at some point you may be the one going backwards you may be the one going forwards and we were all just laughing our asses off having a ball and that's something that i like about not just water parks amusement parks theme parks like this type of entertainment in general uh it taps into those raw emotions that go beyond language barriers where you just have that that sense of wonder and excitement and happiness, even if it's brief, but it's so strong that people keep coming back for more. That's exactly how places like this stay in business. And I totally had that with this family on the raft ride earlier. <laughs> we just had a great time. So uh, being here alone has its downsides, but uh, you find fun, you know, in the right places. These french fries are extremely salty. 
Something else cool about this is, uh, like at Disney with the Magic Bands, it knows when you ride a ride. You scan in and it takes your picture on the rides. And then you can view your photos. Blachuri Marketplace right here up near the front. Swimsuits, shirts, hats, sandals, towels, goggles, sunscreen, everything you could possibly need. So that's the trade-off. There's not as many selections on uh, food and drink, but there's, I mean, look, there's nobody here. You can go ride anything you want right now over and over and over again. So I think it's a decent trade. I'm not that upset by it. On the way out, turn in your Tapu Tapu, and that's it. Thank you. Now we go wait for the bus to take us back to the parking garage. The parking here at Universal, and this is actually a thing I like, uh, if you're going to either of the theme parks, City Walk or uh, Volcano Bay, you go to the same place. All the, the parking and the entry is, is central to all of it, and then you're split off accordingly. Now for Volcano Bay, it's actually removed from that parking structure and where everything else is a little bit. So there's just a short bus ride uh, that commutes you back and forth between the two places. And now we're gonna go hop back on that bus. Everything between the bus and the park entrance looks like you're going into Legends of the Hidden Temple or something. Indiana Jones. If Indiana Jones had an escalator, that, I mean, if he didn't have to dangle from a whip wrapped around a sketchy log, he probably, you know, would have been better off. silly videos and I want you guys to come with me on all these crazy trips and uh, yeah just thank you for watching so keep your eyes out for the next one and take care and I'll see y'all soon